We get him in the studio every once oh in a while. Goodness. We're like swatting out a fly here and there. You've probably, yeah, you've probably seen it. Well, flies are arguably one of the least liked members of the animal kingdom. However, their newest contribution to the science of hearing may make you rethink the fly's reputation just a little. That is because certain flies have an acute sense of sound. And that evolutionary trait is being used to help hearing impaired humans sharpen this important sense. For the most part, she's your average kid. I want to go to college, most importantly. She is a little girl with a dream. I want to be a nurse, but I want to be a baby nurse. And a challenge. I'm just a girl who has a problem with my ears. And I've had 13 surgeries on my ears. I've had hearing aids constantly, and it's just challenging. Three out of every 1,000 children are born with partial or total hearing loss. Emily Dowdy is one of them. Sometimes I do feel left out on conversations and jokes. I mean, people treat you different. Emily relies on a hearing aid in one ear, often picking up sharp background noises that can actually hurt. But a better way to hear may soon make a landing in this ugly critter, a direct descendant of the common house fly. Scientists discovered that this particular fly was locating crickets based on the sound emitted by the cricket. Scientists like Neil Hall have been working on a new type of hearing device that's modeled after this insect's exceptional ears. It's expected to allow people to better hear what they need to hear and drown out everything else. Notice the difference? This is an audio recording with a conventional microphone in the presence of ambient background noise. This is an audio recording with the fly-inspired microphone in the presence of the same ambient background noise. As sound traveled across it, it hits one side just a split second before the other, and that's enough to tip the teeter-totter into this rocking motion. It could help Emily and the 30 million other Americans with hearing loss. It's really exciting. Maybe this will work. You know, it's just they've been trying and trying to find new stuff. I've been getting new hearing aids constantly, and I'm just hoping that one hearing aid will help people like me. Isn't that just amazing? Now, there is also hope the device may help police and soldiers detect sounds of danger, like a sniper hiding in the dark. It's expected to be affordable and available within the next couple of years. It is amazing. Absolutely fascinating. And I guess we can actually now add an insect to the list of animals that have turned out to be beneficial to humans. That's right, Jimmy. Dogs have always been used to help humans. And when you can use a shelter dog, it's definitely a win for both the dog and the person they serve. Well, today, we meet Blondie, once a dog who had an uncertain future, now a dog with a big job for her new hearing impaired master. 18-month-old Blondie doesn't know it yet, but each step the Golden Retriever Yellow Lab mix takes through the shelter gets her closer to changing someone's life. Kind of a fun little prank, if you want to call it, or a surprise would be a better word. It's a big surprise for Jamie Randall, who is meeting the dog of her dreams, something that, until today, she didn't think was possible. She deserved a, a nice surprise. Blondie isn't just any dog, and Jamie isn't just any owner. Jamie is deaf, and her new dog has been specially trained to meet her needs. Blondie and Jamie will communicate through a special collar. When you put it on, it vibrates. It doesn't shock Blondie, it just lets her know Jamie is trying to call her. That is a sit, like this. Blondie has also been trained to understand commands and sign language. <laughs> and with a single whistle, Blondie will come on command. It's all part of a growing program through the nonprofit Doggone Express. Dogs like Blondie, who end up at the shelter, are trained by inmates in state prisons, and some are trained for service. It's the greatest glory that anyone can have is being able to reach down and help another up, whether it be on four legs or two legs. The idea is that Blondie will help her adopted mom become more independent, allowing her to find a job and live on her own. I think that the dog will alert her to sounds that she wouldn't hear. Jamie has these words for her new companion. Thank you for saving her life. Saving paws and saving souls. That's the mission of this program. And today, Jamie and Blondie are saving each other and forming the beginning of a lifelong bond. Jamie and Blondie are going to be best friends for a long time.
Hmm. That's not, that's, isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> and you've met Lacey. Yes. Um, not talking wife, about your morning co-host. No, 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 not in the morning. Uh, <laughs> my wife, Carol, uh -huh. um, had a service dog named Lacey. I think there she is. There she is. Oh, beautiful Taking a school dog. picture with Carol. How about that? Lacey was the most amazing dog. Just before uh, Lacey, we had Max, who was a boxer. But Lacey would let Carol know. She went, if you went to classes in Laurel or Seaford, you probably met Lacey a few years ago. Lacey would let her know. I'm going to tell you one story, and I'm going to be real quick about this if I can. In Laurel, she was in an area where there was a telephone to talk to the teachers. Um, but they alerted the teachers by a series of beeps over the speaker. Uh -huh. For Carol, it was five beeps. Right. Okay. So one beep, two beeps, Lacey wouldn't look up. But when there were five beeps, Lacey would go over and nudge Carol to go answer the phone. She taught herself to count to five. That's amazing. Isn't that incredible? Well, Lacey was definitely a big part of yours and Carol's life, Jimmy. Other instances where dogs have been utilized are those who are vision impaired as well as veterans who used guide dogs after World War I. Now, you may remember in June, we told you about a program where inmates at Eastern Correctional Institution trained dogs to help disabled veterans. It's called America's Vet Dogs. And in July, we learned about a similar program in Wicomico County called PAWS. This program allowed disabled veterans and wounded warriors who have become homeless to train shelter dogs to become service dogs to help other veterans. And other people who may need help, senior. Sometimes as you get older, you can find yourself needing help with easy day-to-day -day activities. And there can be a lot of those, many different things. For instance, uh, screwing in a light bulb programming a remote, maybe just taking out the trash. But now, help is as simple as a phone call away for some seniors, thanks to a new concept called the Village to Village Network. And come to find out, nothing is too much to ask. The table was a work of art. Walk with 85-year-old Shirley Dunkel down memory lane. But he made this too. Her now deceased husband, Bill, built nearly every stick of furniture in the house she's lived in for 55 years. Now her neighbors yeah. ensure she'll live there for many more years. They would help with errands, with uh, doctor's appointments. Our mission is to help seniors living in Falmouth stay living uh, safely and independently in their own homes. Karen Bohr is in charge of the Village to Village Network, a grassroots effort now sweeping the country. There's over 100 villages in the, in the United States right now. Villages are volunteers helping okay. seniors, neighbor helping neighbor, for a yearly fee of $600 for singles and $900 for couples. That's finished. A lot of these things I used to be able to do myself, and I just can't anymore. Not being able to do for themselves is the number one concern for our aging population. Even so, 90% of seniors say they want to stay in their own homes as they age. Simple changes can be made to homes to help seniors live safely. First, install non-slip floor surfaces and add grab bars in the bathrooms. Build an entrance without steps. Move electrical outlets higher and lower electrical switches. And most importantly, invest in a personal alert system. Right now, 100 seniors are being helped here. Often, it's their children who will sign them up. Our oldest member uh, will be 99 this year, and she's living alone and going strong. The extra set of hands and eyes gives Shirley's children peace of mind, and it gives Shirley her independence. Organizers say fundraising efforts help those seniors who can't afford to pay to become members of a village to village network. Hmm. You know, though, for many people, Jimmy, assisted living or a retirement community is the way to go, even if they're not ready to slow down. Up next on Delmarva Life, we'll meet two seniors who say at first they didn't like the idea of leaving their family home for a retirement community. Now they say they can't imagine being anywhere else. And a little later on, once you set foot on this beautiful piece of land in Caroline County, you will not want to leave. Find out why the Atkins Arboretum is this week's Delmarva Treasure. Delmarva Life will be right back. <laughs>